What if scientists could literally cut HIV out of the body or train your own immune cells to hunt it down? In today's episode of the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast, we'll explore two groundbreaking technologies, CRISPR and CAR-T. Both are racing toward the same goal, a real and lasting cure for HIV. But which one is actually closer to making that dream a reality? Stay with us until the end of this episode because we're breaking down this complex topic in simple, easy to understand language. So you'll walk away with a clear understanding of how these two scientific powerhouses are shaping the future of HIV treatment. So let's get started with today's podcast. Hello and welcome to HIV RNA Test Guide Podcast, your trusted source for HIV testing, with over 4,500 plus testing labs across the United States. Today we are taking on uh, really one of the biggest challenges in modern medicine, finding a practical cure for HIV. It's a huge goal. Yeah. And we're putting two, well, two superstar technologies head to head, CRISPR, you know, the gene editor. And molecular scissors, yeah. And then CAR-T, those reprogrammed immune cells. The engineered hunters. So our mission today is really to get past the hype, look at the actual data from the trials. Right. Explain simply how they work, what the early human results really show. And figure out, you know, realistically, which one might be closer to being a real functional cure. It's crucial stuff if you're following gene therapy or infectious diseases. Definitely. But first, let's set the stage. We have to talk about what cure even means for HIV because it's not straightforward, is it? No, not at all. Yeah. Uh, researchers usually mean one of two things. First, there's the, well, the ultimate goal, a sterilizing cure. Meaning completely gone. Exactly. Zero detectable virus anywhere, which is incredibly hard because HIV hides so well. Okay, so that's the gold standard. What's the more maybe achievable goal in the nearer term? That's the functional cure or sometimes called durable remission. Here, um, the virus might still be lurking in tiny amounts, right? but the person's immune system, maybe with a boost from these therapies, keeps it totally under control without needing daily pills, the antiretroviral therapy, or art. And just for you listening, how big a deal is a functional cure compared to just staying on art? Oh, it's night and day. Art is amazing. It's turned HIV into something manageable, but it's still a daily pill, potential long-term side effects, the mental load. Mm -hmm. A functional cure means freedom from that. No daily meds, potentially resolving that chronic low-level inflammation. Okay. But the big hurdle for both types of cure is the same, those viral reservoirs. The hiding spots. Yep, cells hidden deep in lymph nodes, the gut where the virus just waits silently. But we know a cure is possible, right? We've seen it. The Berlin patient, Timothy Ray Brown, and the London patient. Adam Castillo. Yes, those cases are the blueprint. They both had stem cell transplants for cancer. And the key was the donor cells. Exactly. The donor had a rare natural genetic mutation, CCR5 Delta 32. Which is like locking the door HIV uses. Precisely. CCR5 is the protein, the doorknob most HIV strains use to get into immune cells. This mutation jams the lock. So their new immune systems were basically resistant. They stopped ART virus didn't come back. But that transplant was super risky, only for severe cancer. So now CRISPR and CART are trying to copy that effect. Right. Trying to make an HIV resistant immune system or clear out the virus completely, but safely and affordably for everyone who needs it. Without that dangerous full immune system, wipe and replace. That's the core challenge. How do you replicate that outcome without the risk? Okay, let's dive into contender number one, CRISPR, the molecular scissors. We know the analogy. Yeah, think of it like a tiny programmable editing tool. It has two parts, the Cas protein, that's the scissor, uh -huh. and the guide RNA, which is like a GPS address. You program the guide RNA to take the scissors to the exact spot on the DNA you want to cut or change. And for HIV, they're trying, what, two main things with it? That's right. Uh, strategy one is making the patient's own cells resistant. Editing the gene for CCR5, essentially giving them that Berlin patient effect internally. So blocking the door. Blocking the door. Strategy two is more direct, maybe more ambitious. Going after the HIV DNA that's already integrated into the person's cells, mm -hmm. the provirus, and trying to literally cut it out. Snip, snip. So lock the door or find the virus's blueprint inside the cell and shred it. You got it. And a major trial looking at shredding the blueprint was EBT-101. They used a delivery system called an AAV vector. 
adeno-associated virus. Correct. To get the CRISPR machinery into the patient's body, what we call in vivo delivery. Okay, let's talk about those EBT101 results, because the safety part looked good, but the effectiveness, that raised questions, didn't it? It did. The initial data was actually a huge step for gene editing in general. EBT101 showed the AAV delivery was safe, it was tolerable, and the CRISPR tool did get into target tissues. That's a massive first step. Safe delivery, check. But then some participants stopped their art to test it. And the virus came back. It rebounded. So even though the tool got delivered, it didn't stop the rebound? Why not? This really highlights the sheer scale of the reservoir problem. It likely wasn't that the CRISPR cut wasn't effective where it hit, but that it didn't hit enough places. Ah, coverage. Exactly. HIV hides in so many cells. Estimates are you need to eliminate or disable something like 99.99%, maybe more, mm -hmm. of all infected resting cells. Miss even a tiny fraction, and the virus can restart. So the rebound suggests the AAV vector just couldn't penetrate everywhere, deep into the lymph nodes, the gut. Or maybe the dose wasn't high enough. Probably a combination of both. Yeah. And there's an engineering limit with AAV itself. Mm -hmm. It's safe, which is great, but it's like a tiny delivery truck. It doesn't have a huge cargo space. Right. Fitting all the CRISPR components, the scissors and multiple guides maybe, into that small package and getting it to billions of cells effectively. It's a major challenge. Mm -hmm. Limits the dose and complexity. So CRISPR showed safety potential, but needs a much better delivery method to really work broadly. That seems to be the main takeaway. Better targeting, better reach. Okay, so if CRISPR is like trying to get the perfect editing tool delivered everywhere, maybe we need a different strategy altogether. Yeah. Enter CAR-T, the reprogrammed hunters. Right. CART, chimeric antigen receptor T cells. This is totally different because it's a living drug. Living drug? How does that work? You take a person's own T cells, their immune fighter cell, yeah. out of their body. In the lab, you genetically engineer them to have a new synthetic receptor on their surface the car. Okay. This car is designed to recognize a specific target, like a protein on a cancer cell, or in this case, a protein on an HIV-infected cell. Then you grow billions of these engineered, uh, supercharged T like cells. Billions. Yep. Expand them into an army and then infuse them back into the patient. And what's really interesting is CAR-T isn't just theory, it's already curing some cancers, right? Oh. That must give it a head start. A massive head start. The whole infrastructure manufacturing, FDA approvals, hospital protocols, trained staff. It largely exists because CAR-T works so well for certain leukemias and lymphomas. So they're adapting that cancer tech for HIV. Exactly. Scientists designed the car to key to target HIV, usually the envelope protein on the surface of infected cells. The goal is for these CAR-T cells to patrol the body, find those infected cells, including the ones hiding in reservoirs, and kill them. Where are we seeing progress with HIV-specific CAR-T? A lot of focus is on making them persistent and tough engineering them not just to kill, but to resist exhaustion, to stick around long term. There's promising lab data, like with specialized M10 CAR T cells. Not human trials. Early human trials are underway. Right now, they're mostly focused on safety, feasibility. Can we make these cells? Do they survive in the body? Do they cause problems? They're not really testing for a cure effect just yet, more about laying the groundwork. Some are using clever tricks, like targeting CAR T cells that also recognize common viruses like CMV, hoping that gives them longevity. But, like we saw with cancer, CAR-T has its own hurdles, especially around safety, right? That intense immune reaction. That's the big one we need to talk about. First, manufacturing is complex, it's personalized for each patient, and it's expensive. Very expensive. Okay. And then, patient safety. The main concern is cytokine release syndrome, CRS. Can you explain CRS for listeners? Yeah. What is that? Yeah, CRS is basically the immune system going into overdrive. When you put billions of these super aggressive CAR T cells in and they start killing target cells really fast, they release a flood of inflammatory signals called cytokines. Which sounds bad. It can be. High fevers, blood pressure drops, organ problems. It can require intensive care. So a huge amount of research now is on making safer CAR T cells, maybe with off switches, yeah. or designs that are less likely to trigger massive CRS, especially for a chronic condition like HIV. Okay, let's really put them side by side now. CRISPR, the precise internal editor, versus CAR T, the external patrolling army. If HIV is like stubborn weeds in a garden, how do they compare? It's a good analogy. CRISPR works inside the cell. It's like trying to use those tiny fissures to precisely cut the genetic root of the weed underground. Very accurate if you can get it there. Needs perfect delivery to every route. Exactly. Whereas CAR T. Without dogs. Yeah, CAR T is like trained guard dogs patrolling the whole garden, sniffing out any cell that looks like a weed, 
shows the HIV protein on its surface mm -hmm. and digging it up, killing it. It's a dynamic searching approach. But maybe the dogs get too aggressive or get tired. Yeah, those are the risks, yeah. yeah. Overreaction or exhaustion. And it seems like both, despite being so different, run into the same fundamental walls that have always made HIV cure so hard. What are those main hurdles again? Three big ones. First, reservoir reach. We keep coming back to this. Getting the therapy, whether it's the CRISPR-carrying AAV or the CART cells, to every single hiding place is incredibly difficult. The lymph nodes, the gut, maybe even the brain. The virus is just too hidden. It's a master of stealth. Second, complete eradication. You missed just a tiny fraction of affected cells. The virus comes back. The therapy needs to be almost perfectly thorough or leave the immune system capable of controlling whatever's left indefinitely. That threshold is just incredibly high. Astronomical, really. And third, safety and scalability. Whatever works has to be safe enough for potentially millions of people and practical to manufacture and deliver globally. Not like the Berlin patient's cure, which was unique and dangerous. Right. The cost of CART now, the complexities of in vivo gene editing, these are huge barriers to making it available everywhere. Massive hurdles for global health equity. Okay, so the million dollar question you pose at the start, which one is actually closer to being a practical cure right now? Well, it's, it's nuanced, depends on how you measure closer. How so? If you measure by progress in human safety testing and clearing early regulatory steps, maybe CRISPR via EBT-101 has a slight edge purely on demonstrating safe delivery of the core technology in vivo. Even though it didn't achieve the cure outcome in that trial. Correct. It proved safe delivery was possible, which is a big step. But it needs a major redesign for efficacy, likely around delivery. Now, if you measure by clinical practicality and leveraging existing infrastructure... CAR-T seems ahead. CAR-T has a clear advantage there. Because of cancer therapy, the manufacturing know-how, the hospital procedures, the regulatory familiarity is much more developed. Yeah. If they nail an effective HIV-specific CAR-T... The path to rolling it out might be faster. Comparatively, yes. They wouldn't be starting from square one on the whole clinical implementation side. Which leads to what seems like the most likely outcome. It's not one or the other, is it? Almost certainly not. The real buzz among researchers is about combination strategies. Using both. Or even more tools. Imagine using CRISPR, maybe delivered more effectively, to significantly knock down the amount of proviral DNA, debulk the reservoir. Sort of weaken the enemy first. Exactly. Then you follow up with highly persistent, maybe safer CAR T cells to hunt down and eliminate the remaining stragglers. The cleanup crew. Right. And maybe you even add something like broadly neutralizing antibodies to mop up any last bits of virus that might try to rebound. It's likely going to take a multi-pronged attack. Wow. So even though that ultimate cure combo might still be years away, this research isn't happening in a vacuum. It's helping people now, isn't it? Absolutely. All this work on reservoirs, how the virus hides, how the immune system responds, it feeds directly back into improving current care. How so? Well, even partially reducing the reservoir might lead to treatments where people don't need daily art, maybe injections a few times a year. It also inspires better long-acting prevention tools, like injectable PREP using similar delivery ideas. The science constantly informs clinical practice. So looking ahead, say, the next few years, what are the key developments you think we, the listeners, should be watching for? I think the biggest thing to watch is the evolution of CAR-T for HIV. We need to see trials reporting on smarter CAR-T cells. Smarter how? Cells that last longer in the body, that are engineered to resist exhaustion, and critically, that have better safety controls built in. Maybe those on-off switches controlled by a separate drug to manage side effects like CRS. More control, less risk. Exactly. And then the start of those combination trials, seeing CRISPR used with CART or other agents in humans, that will be a real signal that we're moving into the next phase of cure research. That's a really powerful vision for the future, a complex fight, but with incredible tools being developed. So while all this amazing science races forward, what's the bottom line for protecting health today? It really brings us back to the fundamentals. While we wait for these breakthroughs, the absolute best thing for people living with HIV is to stay consistently on their art. It keeps them healthy, prevents transmission. And for everyone. Get tested regularly. Know your status. All this cure research just emphasizes how important early detection and treatment are. Using RNA tests can catch HIV even earlier than standard tests, getting people into care as fast as possible. That's the foundation, while science works on building the future cure.